another uh, author of this presentation is Sungju Kim. Uh, in this presentation, uh, we prepared together, but uh, only I speak. The title is Blockchain for Cyber Defense, and uh, will it be good as you think is our topic. Uh, it's 5 a.m. in Korea, so I think that my condition is not normal, but uh, I hope you understand for understand. So, uh, uh, I'm again, I'm Xian Li, and I'm a PhD student in Korea University and captain in the uh, Republic of the Korean Army. And I have three years' experience as a researcher in agency for defense development. It's about uh, development, developmenting of defense system, defense and armed system. Uh, as a security researcher, I'm interested in network security and cyber defense and uh, blockchain. About blockchain, I'm about blockchain. Uh, I was a speaker of uh, Cryblog 2019 at IEEE Infocom. Info countering uh, title was countering block withering attack efficiently. Uh, also, I speak at Cryblog 2020 at ACM Mobicom. Uh, the title will be a little bit septem September, and title will be uh, No First of Stake as Take Predatory Destructive Attack on Pro uh, First of Stake Cryptocurrencies. It will be about uh, novel attack methodology about uh, POS cryptocurrency. And um, not about research, I like to get uh, groundbreaking ideas from philosophy, and my favorite first first are Derrida, Nietzsche, Foucault, and Wittgenstein. Another author of this presentation is uh, Sungju Kim. He's a professor. He's my advisor, and he's a professor of School of Cybersecurity in Korea University. And he's a reviewer. He's a reviewer in uh, several international hacking conferences like Black Hat Asia and Secure Inside, and he's also advisor of an undergraduate hacking club, Cycor. Uh, this group, the hacking group Cycor, is now competing in DAFCON online, and his main research areas are focused in, on trustworthy system development methodology as SDLC, uh, secure SDSC and RMF, common criteria, assembly, CMBP, and blockchain, and etc. So our topics are: what is, what is blockchain for cyber defense? Maybe many uh, many of you are uh, blockchain professional, but not familiar with cyber defense or blockchain for cyber defense, and our main discussions are about challenges for challenges in cyber defense and 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 then and then we will talk about the latest military project and analysis and uh, as a summary we will talk about takeaway uh, targets of this talk are four kinds of people someone interested in blockchain and Someone interested in cyber defense, and and someone interested in how blockchain can be hacked, and someone who needs fresh ideas, though uh, who don't know who doesn't know blockchain or what is cyber defense. Uh, I hope this talk will give you fresh ideas about to this topic of, or any ideas. Uh, so blockchain for cyber defense, what is it? Uh, maybe uh, you know what is blockchain. Blockchain, actually, blockchain is uh, not cl clearly defined. Blockchain is started from Bitcoin, the founded by Satoshi Nakamoto. In his white paper, he didn't talk about what is didn't didn't uh, write clear definition of blockchain, but he, his main topic of, was Bitcoin. So uh, in my thought, I think blockchain is constructed by 
three concepts. Maybe some can think differently because block, start of blockchain was not clearly defined. So one is as a data st structure has changed block blocks and as a network structure distrib distributed network and as a consensus structure, decentralized consensus. And um, it has some nature problem, kind of um, fundamental problems. It's called trilemma, scalability, security, and decentralization. Three kinds of characteristics are uh, can be satisfied uh, at the same time. Then what is cyber defense? Maybe some of you know, or but maybe a majority of you don't know. Uh, this picture is just for fun. It's not like cyber defense. It's just funny. Um, so what is cyber defense? Before I talk about this, I should talk, discuss, define about, of, define the, what is cyber security. Classically, uh, many people talk about information security, but also many people just talk about cybersecurity like information security. If cybersecurity cyber security is the same as information security, then it's not worth to just talk about cybersecurity or name cybersecurity. So I bring a clear and distinguishable definition from the reference at the bottom bottom you can see. So in in their research they define cybersecurity as uh, treating stress using ICT. Then what is classical information security? Information security is treating stress to information based based assets. But cybersecurity is and treating any stress using ICT ICT. So ICT is information and communication technology. For example, mm, car accident is not about, uh, not included in information security, but if car accident is by a car remotely controlled by a hacker, then it is included in cybersecurity domain. So now we can define what is cyber defense. So cyber defense is uh, intersection of cybersecurity and national security or national defense. National security and national de just defense or national defense are just used in the same way many times. So, uh, just narrowly, uh, cyber defense is about military defense, but widely, it, it's all about national security. So, why is it like that? So, you can see in the the picture. Uh, at the past, the threats to countries was were through only military domain. They should overcome armed force and army, air force and navy. But so general physical threats on defense choose through military area, but non-military domain, including severe assets and critical infrastructures are covered by our military domain, but uh, these days they can be attacked directly by ICT, uh, information and communication technologies. Uh, for example, they can just hack the plant and hack the um, the financial systems and hack government governmental information systems. It, it's, all, um, it's already happened, you know. Uh, 2007 cyber attack to Estonia, it was really severe. That's the beginning of the CCDCOE in NATO. And 2010, Stuxnet to Iranian nuclear facilities. It was shocking ac accident that computer virus can stop the nuclear targets and stop nuclear plant. And 2015, Black Energy uh, temporarily stopped the Ukrainian power grid. So now cyber attacks can directly attack the national 
security and national assets. So therefore, national countries need powerful cybersecurity technologies. So that's how uh, cyber defense meets blockchain. Well, blockchain looks secure and reliable. It's many articles and many uh, news always talk about uh, it's really nice secure words with blockchain, like secure, reliable, survival, and, yeah, and so on. So it's true, uh, blockchain, te blockchain technology provides, uh, it, it's not about single point of failure and it's immune to any minority attacks and even DDoS attacks are really difficult to blockchain. It should overcome majority resources. So, <clears throat> policymakers of countries easily think like that. Our uh, defense systems require high security and security and high reliability. Oh, blockchain! Blockchain looks unhackable. Okay, then defense needs this this technology. Yeah. It's really simple logic and expectable. In reality, many projects are always already in progress. Um, we will discuss about related projects at next and the next section, but in preview, military included messaging app built on blockchain, blockchain supply chain enhancement for trusted and assured RPG. FPGA and ASICs, decentralized key management using blockchain, army innovation network, provenance using blockchain and disconnected networks, Navy multi-factor authentication, uh, coops through resilient blockchain framework, Chinese surges reward system using cryptocurrency, blockchain-based record inter intelligence, French military police record on Tajus blockchain, South Korean military, uh, blockchain based uh, digital ID identification, DID, and also other projects. So, will it be, so will it be as good as you think? Well, uh, in this talk, I want to question and introduce some challenges. So, to meet the challenges, let's go to the battleground. Maybe some of you like this game. So what what is waiting for us in, in the battleground? Uh, there's a profession. I entered a profession, Carlton Close Closevet, and he's a really professional in uh, war and battleground. He said in Twitter, war is volume of uncertainty, three quarters of the factors on which action in war is based on based are wrapped in a fog of greater and lesser uncertainty. Uh, in summary, it's, he says, it's full of uncertainty. So what is big uncertainty? Blockchain technology all, already assumes, assumed many uh, un uncertain situations, right? So, but in background, uncertainty is, can be real extreme. For example, uh, you got ordered to go to a mountain and and save the mountains. Uh, in Korea, mountains are like that, and we have our territory is covered by our seventy of territory is covered by mountains like that. So when you go to when you got ordered to go to mountain and then we expect mountains are covered by trees usually, right? But in reality, mountains can be just like devastated. In just you can go to mountain and there can be even no single tree. Where where trees there they burned down a year ago. Uh, in Korean War at 1950, most of our trees were just burned down. Yeah. So what I want to say is situation. Situations in battleground can be extremely miserable. But 
you got order and then just you should say I I sir in army. Uh, so let's assume policymakers said adopt the blockchain technology and secure our networks. And you also let's assume it's not questionable. You don't you don't you're not allowed to question about this decision. Even though many actually many people can can be can uh, don't agree with private blockchain networks, but yeah. So we will encounter three challenges: challenge one, air gap networks, and challenge two, first dynamic environment, and challenge three, the resource shortage. So, well, challenge one, air gap networks. So what is air gap networks? Oh, uh, this is maybe familiar for most of you. Uh, in in military domain networks and critical infrastructures in of country, uh, many networks are have air gap environments. Um, air gap is something technology to make networks isolated. So uh, you can see internet mail is threats are come from uh, outer internet. So to protect inner networks may you can you can make air gaps. Air gaps can be software based air gap and hardware based air gap and there's true air gap. True gap true air gap means there's no communication between air gap. But well it's not always magical because Stuxnet uh exploded air gap networks anyway. Uh if there is net air gap anyway if there is an air gap then it is hard to make uh block construct blockchain because just communication is not possible and net many networks are part partitioned and isolated. So anyway um let's make blockchain it here so so for uh for example you can construct servers of uh, each party is isolated networks and communicate uh, messages by that those servers then then it will be single point of failure and it's just centralized uh, another way you can make just isolated networks and and each isolated network ha has isolated blockchain, but then the iso isolated network has not enough nodes or not enough servers to make uh, enoughly uh, centralized, decentralized networks. So it will make decentralization not effective. So in summary, because of the air gap structure of defense network, it may be hard to adopt blockchain. And second challenge, first dynamic environment. Uh, wherever wherever the military goes, communication must always exist. In actually, it was same same at the past warfare, but in modern warfare, getting information and processing yeah. information and and make decisions are really important and should be fast because uh, we should make decisions faster than enemy and move faster than enemy so that we can make the superior position. So anyway, uh, to for that, uh, for this process, communication must be followed. Uh, so, in this picture, uh, in modern warfare, uh, all of these things require communication. So, it means, uh, let's see the example. Uh, it's map of World War II and 
they can't maybe <laughs> is how uh how Nazi Nazi uh extended their occupied territory really fast and broadly and right maybe is how their occupied territory shrinks really fast. Uh let's see the second second uh left map. Uh when when Nazi ex extended their occupied territory, territory then communication system must follow all of occupied territory and cover their communication really fast. It's um, even if their advance is really fast, communication and their system must follow. There's no exception. Uh, at at the last uh, right map, uh, even if their territory, uh, occupied territory, sharing, sharing really fast communications uh, system will shrink really fast anyway, just whatever is distributed throughout. Anyway, another example, it's uh, our country case. Uh, it's about, it's map of uh, Korean War at 1950. It's entirely, before the warfare, before the Korean War, the territory was divided uh, at this line, 38 parallel. But just in three months, uh, South Korea's territory was shrunk to just two cities, Daegu and Busan, and we are really shrunk really fast. And But you can see just in two or three months, we expanded our territory till the just nearly end of North Korea, but it we retreated really fast again. So, uh, okay. Uh, what I want to say is, uh, battleground environment is really dynamic, and we can't choose, and there's no exception, and. We are just first in. We are just first to meet situations. So uh, let's see. Uh, this, let's move. Uh, let's move on the blockchain. So uh, let's consider the case: sudden expansion, and it's our private network blockchain network is just like PBFT. Then uh, we have. At the left situation, we have eight total nodes and accept, accept our 40 nodes are like two. But we expand, ex expanded our territory really fast and we just uh, added a lot of nodes because we should follow the, we should cover the occupied territory and then Except our 30 nodes should be 12, but in PVF here, it is kind, this kind of uh, consensus mechanism, uh, we need settings. But if it, this expansion is really fast and this setting can't can be, if this setting is not uh, adapted, then it'll be really easy to make consensus. The past majority becomes Minority eight is minority of thirty six, so that is now your minority can make consensus. Another case is kind of a reverse case. So let's think about sudden sharing kit. Uh, sharing kit is this typo. Um, uh, your original set is total nodes thirty six, and it's in PBFT. Except our thirty nodes are. The number of accept over 40 nodes is, nodes is 11, but your most of nodes are just destroyed, and then you have to turn nodes eight, and accept the number of accept over 40 nodes should be three, but you're just destroyed, so you can't uh, make setting in the in the time, but so it's it will be nearly impossible to make consensus, so. The minority, the past minority becomes the majority in this situation. That is, now your majority can't make the consensus.
So another situation, bombing and partitioning. Uh, it's the last situation. Your, your nodes just can be partitioned. Uh, in public blockchain, it's, it's nearly impossible because uh, nodes are connected by just like a worldwide, like a worldwide web, just so it's really hard to make clear partition, just divide into two partitions, but it's possible in, uh, in, in war situations. So for example, you have to turn a 30, 30, 36 nodes and it's partitioned and uh, there's no measure to anywhere. The, furthermore, there's another issue. If you connect the uh, partitions, but they're, they have their own blocks and especially for PVF tier deterministic consensus mechanisms, consist consistency will be a really big problem, you know. So we'll meet a first problem and in, in military situation, we can't just throw another information. We just, we can't choose just one information. We, sh we need collect all information and process and decide. So it'll be a problem. So it's, it was a second challenge. Uh, to summarize, in more extreme situations, assumptions can be easily broken and weakness can be easily revealed. So especially in my examples, deterministic consensus mechanisms that cannot guarantee aliveness are real problems in these situations. Uh, challenge three, research shortage. is actually it's a classical problem of uh, blockchain. That, but I, I can't uh, miss this problem. I, I can't just, I can't mention this problem. Blockchain's another, blockchain's other name is state replication system. So it will replicate computation resource, storage resource, latency resource, bandwidth, bandwidth resource. But uh, existing military system were consistent, considered existing missions and existing systems. So just replicating existing performances will be a problem. And we, we adopt blockchain for missions, not missions for blockchain. So influence on mission critical functions should be checked. Mission critical functions should be guaranteed and then we can adopt blockchain. But yeah, first problem is resource consumption. Then what is second problem? Second problem is serving resource consumption is not easy. So uh, if we don't have enough resource, then we should uh, get more resources and then we need to get another uh, more, more systems or more resources than we need uh, defend, we need to use defense acquisition process. So, <clears throat> but uh, maybe some of you already already knew, but uh, a military acquisition system is process is really conservative and it requires a really a rigorous test and evaluation process. It's really heavy and uh, military defense acquisition process is was have been developed in this way. So, so you can see in the left picture is uh, the U.S. Uh, military acquisition system, and it's really bureaucratic and conservative and really heavy. So. Uh, there are many articles or and interviews that uh, DOD or many countries are suffering from slow uh, defense acquisition process, and it's all well rigorous tasks and evaluations and rigorous 
acquisition system process is essential, but it, it is a really big problem in cybersecurity because, you know, system is developed and vulnerabilities are always hiding, hiding, but vulnerabilities are just found time by time, but military acquisition system is not that rapid to react from these updates or kind of that. So anyway, military bureaucratic acquisition system process is not it's not, it'll be difficult because of that, it'll be difficult to solve resource consumption problem. So in this situation, what can you do? Proof of work to adopt proof of work. Uh, we can't waste energy. Of course, proof of stake. We don't have coins in defense system. Then when you go to private, private consensus mechanism like PBFT, then we will go back to the challenge two again. It, it, it can't guarantee liveness, so it will make such extreme problems. So in summary, mission is always first, but due to the military environment, support is not so timely and sufficient to adopt blockchain. So next is a uh, related military project. So we surveyed uh, 42 uh, defense projects about blockchain and categorized as below. And each project can be categorized into multiple categories. For example, uh, there's a research about um, ident uh, key management about a military drone system, then it's categorized into Internet of Things and communications and identification authentication. Yeah. And especially data integrity category is just for data integrity uh, project. Uh, it's because actually adopting blockchain technology, technology is basically about data integrity. So we cl class, uh, Categorize a project only about data integrity into that category. So main categories are like, are like that: uh, data in integrity, supply chain management, Internet of Things, and communications, and identification and authentication. So, oh, uh, uh, so uh, we we are take we are somewhat careful, careful about mentioning a project because about related project, project detailed information about many real military projects are classified. We got information from even just project notification and interviews and just news articles. So our, the information we got are, is, can be not clear or can be somewhat misunderstood. So uh, we want to notice that our comment are our comments are based on limited information. So data integrity, uh, three, three. There, are, for example, there are three projects: French mil military police uh, records on, records on Tezos blockchain. It's interesting that they put records on public blockchain. So maybe they can avoid problems that I mentioned, like the problems happened in private blockchain. And another example is US DOD project, sharing of defense research, development, testing, evaluation on blockchain. And another project is also US DOD provenance using blockchain on disconnected networks. This project is also interesting that they already considered some disconnected network situation in tactical networks. So another related 
category is supply chain management. Uh, in cyber defense, supply chain management is uh, is really a big issue. Uh, maybe you you knew, you read you read Bloomberg article about <coughs> uh, microchip hacking, but it's I don't know if it's true or not. But it what what I know is it was a truly a big issue and. There are another. There are other articles about supply chain attacks are suspicious and yeah, it's it's truly a really a big, really important attack vector. And so there's a US DoD project about it, blockchain supply chain enhancements for trusted and assured RPGA and ASICs. But blockchain blockchain and supply management is actively researched for efficiency of our supply chain, not only for security. security. Another category is, is Internet of Things. Uh, there's a U US uh, Department of Homeland Security project is combining blockchain technology with critical infrastructure. This project is about sensors and cameras that protect in uh, data so sensors and cameras protect integrity and authenticity of critical infrastructure. So this project, uh, this project is about IoT. So I we can just relate it to Challenge Three research series. But I think this uh, the infrastructure is uh, not dynamic, so it can be adaptable. I think. So in communication category, uh, there's a DARPA project building an encrypted message system based on blockchain technology. Um, uh, I think I think it's about tactical networks. So if it, I don't know it's detailed information, but if it is related to messages in tactical networks. Challenge two, first dynamic environments, and challenge three, research shortage, should be considered. Maybe they will be considered. For identification and authentication, uh, there's there are two projects. For example, uh, US DHS project decentralized key management using blockchain, and there's a oh our country project, South Korea project. Blockchain based DID, but maybe maybe some of you noticed uh, some of these projects are not domain specific. I mean, it's not it's not just for only for cyber defense. Many projects are just general, like especially identif identification and authentication, the decentralized key management and DIDs. Not, not only military issue, not only cyber defense. So maybe they are not interesting. So related projects, uh, in my examples are like that. So lines may lines mean that projects. I think is not domain specific. So uh, I'm interested in domain specific blockchain first. Blockchain specifically for cyber defense. So I'm still surveying about this topic and I'm preparing a paper. Then uh, actually, uh, I think I criticized a lot with just question this topic and introduce challenges. But then some can ask, then what are alternatives? So what I what I want to say is. We don't need to choose a perfect blockchain structure. As I mentioned at the at the first part of this this talk, blockchain is um, structured by constructed by three concepts: as a data structure, hash chain blocks, and as a network structure, distributed network, 
and as a consensus structure, decentralized consensus. The, you can just give up one concept or two concepts. Just maybe you only need just distribute, distributed net and parallelized networks. So what I need to do is figure out problems and figure out right solutions, not just decide uh, to use blockchain and figure out which blockchain is adaptable. So to summarize, uh, takeaway are three. Um, cyber defense makes more challenges and requir requirements for blockchain. Air gaps, sudden expansion, sharing case, partitioning, extreme situation can exist. Second, uh, blockchain's resource consumption can be a problem, but defense environments are not that flexible to assign more enough resources. And third, uh, we don't need to cling to blockchain if it's not adaptable. Otherwise, it'll bring more issues. So it's all over my talk and get in touch to uh this emails these emails we welcome any questions and discussions and i think this presentation will be uh uploaded on somewhere so you can see our emails anyway so thank you for uh your attentions and uh thank you again any questions Uh, is there a question? If you can't uh, ask now, then you can just send email or send message to Discord. Any question and dis discussions are welcome. Okay, then thank you. Thank you. Then I can just quit the live streaming, right?